fit and finish of your Enterprise kit on Monster Hobbies. Let's build it! Hello once again. My name is Trevor Selescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Thank you everybody for continuing to watch this series on our USS Enterprise kit from 1983. And tonight is an interesting video because it's kind of a short one, but it's an important one. We're going to show you a little fit and finish techniques used in assembling our starship. So now let's go down to the bench and see what I'm talking about. Welcome back down to our bench. Now this is kind of a crucial stage and it's going to be a rather short video actually, but it's a very important one because this is the one video that you need to watch in order to make sure that all your parts are going to fit together nicely. And if you haven't actually built all four of our components yet, I suggest that you check out some of the other videos by clicking up here so that you can also get to the stage with us. Now with that being said, what do I mean? Well, this video I entitled Fit and Finish, although it isn't actually the finish of our model, because we still have to prep it for paint, we still have to primer paint it, then we have to apply our regular color and the details and then the decals. But this is one of the stages that has to be done before all of that, because if you do it after, you're going to wreck the paint and other things you're doing. So this is one of those crucial, you do not want to miss it type of videos. But the thing being is that we have to figure out what the fit and finish means. So let's go down and check it out. So here we have our four components, the primary hull, the secondary hull, and our two warp engines. And what we need to do now is to see how they fit together. So we can take our secondary hull off the stand and set our stand aside because I think the first thing we can do is to check this fit. So this is the hole where this part of the neck is going to fit into. And we want to make sure that it is going to fit okay without any gaps. So what's the first thing you notice here? It's quite a substantial gap right there. Now a lot of people will fill this with putty or something to try to get rid of that gap. Or they'll take one of their little sheets of styrene, like one of these strips or something, let's say, that we cut from last one of our last videos. And they'll glue that there and try to make sure it fits in everything so that it's okay underneath here. But I've actually found a better way to do this. So what we need is basically, to start with, is a Sharpie pen or any other of these felt tip type markers. And what we'll do is we'll make a little line here and we'll bring the line across here and we will follow the line down there. And this notch that you see is from here, we are going to saw this bit of plastic off and see how that's going to affect our fit and finish. Now that you have this marked out here, we can actually take our Atlas Super Snap saw and cut this off. Now, the Super Snap saws you can usually find in the model railroad department because you use these to cut apart train tracks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my thumb here as a guide. And we'll just start the saw. Okay, I think I've got it on the go. So I'm going to cut, let's see, and be careful with these saws. Always keep your fingers back from where your blade is going in case something like that happens. OK, 
Okay, what I'm trying to do here is done <laughs> is to cut down to the edge of the neck right there. Whoa, okay. Right there. And then we're going to take our saw and go this way flat. Cut this little bit out. Now go slow because you're cutting toward yourself, which is never a good thing to do, but in some situations there is no other way. So there, there's that notch gone. And now this is a bit rough here, of course. So we're going to need our sandpaper block. And using our little cross sanding technique, we want to bring whatever bits of plastic down so that this neck is nice and flat as if it was factory. There, it's pretty decent. You don't want to go too far because you'll make a little nick or something there. Now, to get this area here, my sandpaper doesn't have enough texture. So what I will use is my flat file here. And now remember, one of these sides has teeth on it, the other is smooth, so you want the smooth side down. And this should just bring a bit of that off, putting the smooth side toward here. And always keep an eye on where you're going, because you don't want to end up gouging the plastic where we're going to see it. Okay, so now that is done, and then watch what we can do here. All right, so we got the hole where the saucer is, and now we've got our modified neck with the missing little chunk. Now look at this. Okay, so there it is originally, and you can see that gap. Now we can slide this up to a point where that angle on the neck is now touching where it should be on the saucer. There. Thus eliminating that gap that was so prevalent when it was back here. Okay, there it is there. So that is one step in the fit and finish. Now let's look at the warp engines. Here are our warp engines from a previous video. And as you can see, I have not glued these caps on yet because these are going to be painted a different color from the ship. So they will stay to the side. Now let's see how these engines will relate into their mounting positions, which are these holes here on the secondary hull. All right, so this is going to be this side. And you can tell because there's that texture of the grills right here, they go on the inside, and this goes on to the inside as well. And now, how does this fit here? Well, as you can see right there, into the body, there is a gap right in there. Now, how about the other side? What's the other side looking like? Now with this other side, once that's together, you can see that there's always going to be a little gap line, but this is not as severe as on the other side. So now how do we make the other warp engine 
as fit as good as this warp engine. The first thing we need to check is how does it look down here on this part that goes in? I guess the insert. So if you can tell, it's going to be right along here and probably we're hitting on the top as this goes in. Well, I guess it would be the bottom, right? But we might be hitting inside on the bottom as this goes in. It doesn't really look like anything is standing out here. <laughs> Just hit the engine into the tripod leg. <laughs> so down here it looks pretty fine. So let's maybe start with the end of this tab. Actually, let's start here on this angle because to me, well, you can't really see too well, but to me this doesn't look like it's a perfect angle. It looks kind of more like a hump. So there's our smooth side of the file. We're just going to carefully angle the, the file a little bit to get this side here and this side here to match at an angle. So that'll be our first little challenge. And then the same at the front. Now I hope this doesn't go out of focus because I am pretty close. Yeah, there you can see. You can see my file. So we marry those two together. This is where it gets a bit finicky, so you're going to have to take your time and be careful with doing this. Okay, how's that look? It looks to me like we're starting to get the gap a little smaller there. So that's a good thing. Now there could be another issue here, is that there might be more plastic on this edge than on here, and that's making the, the gap happen. So we can once again take our file and carefully follow this line down. Just maybe give it a few passes. Just to make it a little, little bit neater. Okay, we don't want to do too much. We don't want to create a, a reverse kind of gap or something weird. So we still got a gap there. This is down a bit. Let's just... I don't know. can't really get the sandpaper edge. So I don't think there's too much going on for a sandpaper edge. We can definitely bring this part across. And at the back again. Check it. Okay, see? That got smaller. I think it got smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check one more part of this, and that'll be the end of our stub. And I'll just sand this down a bit. Ugh, what a sound. So the, the thing is, when we cut the alignment pins off and we were able to move this around so that this came out perfectly circular, this may have moved this down just a millimeter to get get it sort of off alignment with 
the two plastic bits coming together, thus creating the gap. So that's sort of why we're we're getting a little bit fussy with how this goes together. Um, I don't know. The, it's all up to you, of course, how far you want to take this to perfect it out. But already I can tell we're we're a bit better there. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to stop here <laughs> for mine. But yeah, it definitely doesn't seem quite as tight on the one side as the other. Like we're talking millimeters here, and we're talking maximeters there. So again, just try to figure out where it would be hitting. I think mine is hitting more on the top here than on the bottom. But at any rate, we're getting some good fit now with our ship. And I'll just back this camera up a little. So there is how that is. And then of course we have... Ooh. We're going to have our saucer here. So there is going to be our ship coming up. But for now, it's a good time to also check some of the fit and finish of the small parts. And if you've missed anything, like here, okay, where it's my holes, I have to drill these out for those bits to get in because I still have my my plastic sitting there. So using my 1 16th drill. There. <laughs> That's funny, you can hear the plastic underneath. Okay. Got the one there. Now, fit and finish is crucial because your finished model is going to reflect anything that you missed. So, I still have to finish putting the putty in on this ship. But uh, I kind of ran out of time in the week. I do have a life, <laughs> believe it or not. Okay, so that fit is looking pretty decent. And then, of course, we have the holes here can feel across, make sure nothing is sticking up that's going to hold your model piece away from where it should be. Now we're not going to use any glue because we still need to paint these intercoolers like I said in the previous videos. But you can see that this is looking good for fit and finish on this particular engine with the extra pieces. There's a bit of a gap there now that I see it. So again, there we go, just need to be clicked in. So yeah, that fit and finish is good. And remember, there's no glue, so things might fall out. Now let's see our other warp engine. And check the fit and finish over here. I know I drilled the holes out because this was the other engine from last week. And that looks pretty good. Yeah. And the one that just fell out, let's put her back in. That one looks really good too. Nothing major making it cause to go up. And feeling there, got those flat. If those are not flat, just again, use your number 16 blade and just do a little adzing in there just to knock any of the uh, the mold stuff off, like flash. And then, how does this guy fit in? That one fits in really well. So again, the little parts, the fit and finish is good. And remember to check your secondary hull for your sensor dish that's going to fit in that hole there. Make sure it can go in perfectly. And then, of course, 
inspect your model, look for little flaws like where you didn't put the putty. Uh, if your camera doesn't blur out on you. Where you didn't put the putty. You know, check on your the putty that you did put in and sand down. Make sure it's under control. <laughs> Unlike my lens. And remember, those little holes have to be there for the little uh, clear plastic parts. And now I'm going to show you something that I use to uh, line up all these parts. Now here's an interesting piece that you probably don't know what you're looking at right away. But this is actually a jig for aligning your Starship Enterprise kit that my dad made. Now you may be thinking, well, Trevor, your dad made a whole bunch of stuff. Well, yeah. My dad was actually an engineer for the telephone company, and he had drafting experience, and these are the sort of things he liked to do. Now, as of this date, my dad is still alive. But as of this date, he's 86 years old, just had his birthday, which was in January. So happy birthday, Dad. This one's for you. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, I know a lot of the Star Trek guys out there are now really curious because this jig is actually really helpful. So I'm going to share a bit of my dad's expertise going on here. So the distance we got between here and here is, uh, let's see, see if I can remember, Imperial, six, six and seven eighths distance between here and here. I don't think the height of these blocks matters too much, but they seem to be like about half an inch high. These ones matter, and the angle is important. If you're building your own jig, you'll have to kind of get the angle yourself here. Uh, well, wait a minute. The whole jig is eight and a half inches, and between the front bits is seven and a quarter, and the back bits are seven centimeters or about three inches now I'm gonna show you what oh and you may be wondering what this is about <laughs> if you've ever built Star Trek kit number 6677 the one that has the three ships one is the Romulan one's the Klingon and of course the Federation now this is the one prior to the cadet series this is the older snap kit, but my dad actually made mini jigs in case these break, which I've got a few broken ones. I can repair them later on in life. So that's the little one. And uh, now here's the whole port in this. So there's your primary hull. You can actually have both of these in at the same time, which is kind of funny. Here's your secondary hull. And now for this jig, you need to have those intercoolers glued in, but we won't be doing that till the painting stage. This is just a mock-up here. You're getting a preview of this stand, actually. So now these warp engines are going to go in here, like this. Then we just align the saucer in the neck. Now, keep in mind when we do this in the painting stages, after the painting stage, these will already be painted, and it'll just be glue there, there, and there. And of course, now with that notch, we can move this and align it perfectly. And you're probably wondering, what are these nails for? Well, this is for these rubber bands, so that you can actually apply some pressure in the gluing phase. A minor... no, I don't know. <laughs> okay, wait, let's get this little guy out of here. I do believe we actually used to have them crossed, if I remember correctly. Okay, so if you cross your rubber bands... This is not Ghostbusters, so we're okay. 
it will apply pressure right dead center there, which will now keep our engines. Because remember, you're, you want to align it. Actually, I think you might be able to get away with it without the intercoolers in. It's been since the 80s, so it's hard to remember how we originally did this. Oops. But yeah, so now your top of your saucer is sitting on these blocks underneath. And you've got your pressure coming down. You could actually throw another rubber band, like a, how I had it before, across here, so that there's pressure at this point, putting pressure down at the neck here. It's all a transfer of how the power goes. So yeah, you've got your pressure. So pressure being applied here, forcing this down, setting your glue into here after a 24 hour period, and also applying pressure when you have your rubber band going this way down straight down here applying pressure onto that glue joint and making this all in perfect alignment once 24 hours have passed your glue is dried and you are ready to take it off <laughs> out of your mold or your jig now it won't fall apart like this is but that is your solid base and uh, that is why your fit and finish is so crucial at this stage because you want to make sure that everything is going to align up perfectly with your model before you get into this which would be like imagining all painted and finalized and ready for the last bit of application before it's all over so remember your fit and finish is going to be crucial on this model kit now one thing I forgot to mention is the height of this which is crucial because that's under your saucer. So if we take our tape measure here and turn it up, you will see that it's actually seven eighths of an inch in height. Well, we hope you enjoyed that episode of Monster Hobbies Let's Build It, where I got to show you the value of making sure that all your fit and finish is excellent so that you can have a good model of your Enterprise kit. And I also got to show you our Star Trek jig. And now I'm going to show you the benefits of using the Star Trek jig. This is a model kit I made of the USS Republic a long time ago. And as you can see, I mean, the fit and finish is really, really excellent. And if you pay close attention to your fit and finish and make your own Star Trek jig and use it, you will also have excellent results. Now here's a testimony to the alignment. If you notice, looking from the front view, where the warp engines are, they should actually visually from the front rest right along the top of the saucer on the bottoms. And as you can see, we have a pretty good sight there of that exact process. So if you get your fit and finish done, your kit will come out perfectly uh, aligned as this one has. Okay, so it will warp out of here. Now, just put that down there where it's safe. Now, if you would like to check out our website, please visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And if you would like to know how to build the primary hull, please click up here. If you'd like to know how to build the secondary hull, click down here. If you would like to know how to assemble your warp engines, click here. And always remember to subscribe to us right here, because if you subscribe, we can make better videos. So we'll check you out next week, and happy star trekking.